Hello family, how are you doing on today? Oh, today is just a marvelous day, another day that the Lord has made, another day that we can rejoice and be glad in it, another day that we could share forth his, his word, bringing him glory, giving him honor, and giving him praise. For truly he is worthy to be glorified, for truly he is worthy to be magnified. For truly, he is the king of glory. He is the king of king. He is the Lord of Lord. He is the great I am, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shabbat. He is the Lord God, our provider. Oh, yes, he is, family. I'm excited once again that I was allied, allotted another day to give him glory, to give him honor, and to give him praise. We were created to praise him. We were created to magnify him. We were created to show him how much we love him. No matter what it looked like, no matter what it appears to be, we must always give him the praise for the victory no matter what. Now, you know, for the last few days, we have been talking about warfare and we have been talking about um, how to go back and take back the things that the enemy has uh, has stolen or has seized or has taken from us and holding some of those things hostage. You know, but, you know, we come in today to give God the praise for the victory in all the things that he has promised us. Because I'm just so taken with the life of David. David was the least of the least of all of his brothers and God saw fit to use him. You know, we're going to get more into David. I was coming in here to talk and to feast about um, and read upon how David was able to take the giant in the land at that time, Goliath, down with one stone. He was the, the least of his brothers. His brothers were very strong and mighty. But David was very scrawny. You know. So it goes back to what I was telling you on yesterday. Be mindful of who you, how you entertain a stranger. You may be entertaining one unaware. But not only that. Of who God is going to use in this hour. Because God is raising up people. That at one time felt low about themselves, that had low self-esteem, had no no type of um, confidence. And you're looking at one. You could have never told me that God would use me in this way. First of all, I thought I couldn't be used to do anything. But let me tell you why I believe God is going to begin to use people such as myself that lack confidence lacked assurance of who they were, uh, didn't think they were good for anything. And the reason being is because of those things. Who better God could show forth his glory through than someone that said, oh no, not me, little old me, I can't be used, I can't do that. And he's saying, yes, I know you can. But if you're willing and yielded, I can through you. He can through you. And as I said, when I came in, I was coming in to talk about David because I'm just so, so excited about the things that he done. You know, a lot of people like to justify adultery by saying, David did it. You know, God forgave him. You know, why can't I do it? And, you know, but you didn't. Ha you don't have the heart David had first off. You know, God searched the heart. He tried the thoughts and he know the ways of man, right? So we just going to leave that for another day. But what I was saying is that I came to feast on David just to read, you know. But as I got ready to sit down in this very chair, I heard the words, pivotal moment. I said, okay, God, you're changing directions. But I love it. You know, because if we come in one way and God said, well, I'm not going to tell her that I'm going to switch it up. It's God. It's not me. I just have to heed and obey what he's telling me. And that's why I'm telling you to get hooked up in the spirit. And he can do the same thing for you. 
we just on, on live should be just to help and encouraging each other. To making sure that our souls are straight. You know, am I my brother's keeper? Yes. Are you your brother's keeper? You should be. We all are trying to get to heaven. And for those of you all who don't want to go, I mean, you know, you're missing out on a great opportunity. Because you're choosing the things of the world right now. You want that flesh to be gratified and justified and feel just right to so. But I come to tell you, if you really get hooked up and truly get in the midst of what God is doing, you're going to be so happy that you did. So if you out there and you stumbled on this channel by way of the Holy Spirit, because I don't believe that nothing just happened or is by happenstance. So if you found your way here, God wants to tell you something. But more so than that, he wants you saved, filled, healed, and delivered. Salvation is free. And it will take you to places that the world could never take you to. See, the world takes your beauty. The world drags you down. Yeah, it may give you a little money here and there and a little fame and a little this and a little that. But I promise you, if you connect with the Father, truly connect, truly develop a relationship, truly seek His face, He's waiting for you to give your life to Him. And it's just simple as believing that Jesus died on Calvary to set the captive free. He gave his life for you and me. And not only did he give up his life, he arose on the third day. And if you believe that he arose and that he's seated upon the right hand of the Father and he is truly living and not dead, then you are saved and you're filled. But let, let's do more than that. I'm going to take you to Romans 10 because that's what I feel led to do and I move by the Spirit. Because see, I can do nothing of myself. I was just like you, a soul needing to be saved. A soul out there tickling the flesh. Thought it was all this and all that and cool and nice to be out there. You know, um, I, I'm driven in the final cause. That's it, but it, that's not living. I've lived in a nice neighborhood, but that's just not all that God wants out of us. So let's go. Let me take you to Romans 10, 9 and 10. Please don't turn away from that channel. If you're not saved and you're by happenstance, God led you here. And even if you are saved, stay right there. I'm not here to play. I'm here to be used by God. And he loved you. So he's using someone to reach you. Nothing is scripted. I, I, I sit in this chair and I ask God. You do what needs to be done. Because I can't. But I'm willing to be used. So let's go to Romans 10, 9 and 10. Okay? God want to speak to you today. He loves you. I'm just like you. I'm trying. Striving. Seeking his face to get direction and instructions because I, I don't have the answers, but he does. So, if I can just give me one moment to, uh, my eyes are tear now, I can't see. Romans, okay Romans, I know I know where you are. God is so good, he's so worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be glorified, worthy to be magnified, worthy is the Lamb of God that was slain. All right. I'm almost there. There would be a few more seconds. Okay, Romans 10. Uh, 9. 
I'm gonna get there. I apologize. I should have had this ready, but like I said, I'm, I'm just following. Okay, so Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I encourage you, if you prayed that prayer, if you said that, and you truly meant that in your heart, you are now saved. You are feel saved. Now ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Evidence of speaking in an unknown tongue. And he will do that for you as well. Develop a relationship with him. Get in an awesome, amazing church that's speaking and teaching the word of God. And God is going to teach you. Because you now a babe, you're on milk. But the more you get up under that word, chew that, uh, drink that word, you you get you graduate to the meat and the potatoes of the word. Okay. So now that we're taking care, we got a new soul in. We welcome you in. Welcome you to join in, like, share, and subscribe. We are protected here to be elevated. We love the Lord. We don't play with God. We come on when God unction us to come on, and we delve into the Word of God. The Word of God is where we get our strength, our life, our livelihood, okay? So, I want to come right quick uh, and just talk briefly about the story of the widow who would not give up. Okay? Just, she would not give up. Then Jesus taught the followers that they should always pray and never lose hope. And yet, we're going back to the pivotal moment. Okay, because that's what he brought me here. But I'm going to set the foundation, and allow God to set the foundation. And we're going to talk about what a pivotal moment is. Because I really believe that's what God wants us to have in these days to come. Is a moment, and I'll go into it. Just listen. Alright, let me start over. Then Jesus taught the followers that they should always pray and never lose hope. He used this story to teach them. Once there was a judge in a town, he did not care about God. He also did not care what people thought about him. Okay? In that same town, there was a woman whose husband had died. She came many times to this judge and said, There is a man who is doing bad things to me. Give me my rights. But the judge did not want to help the woman. After a long time, the judge thought to himself, I don't care about God. And I don't care about what people think. But this woman is bothering me. If I give her what she wants, then she will leave me alone. But if I don't give her what she wants, she will bother me until I am sick. Now, of course, all this is paraphrase, right? All right. So, talking about that unjust judge. And the woman was crying out, asking him to give and to, you know, to, to give her what she thought was justly right to be given. And the judge just wouldn't at first. And so, she continued to keep going to the judge. And she continued. And she's very persistent, right? Sometimes that's we have to be. Not sometimes, all the time with the enemy, especially when he's being stubborn about relinquishing or releasing our health, our healing, our money. You know, we have to, uh, no, devil, not so, not on my watch. You're not doing this. You have to let the devil know I'm just as serious as you are. I'm in this, I'm in this to win it. I don't care what it looks like. I don't bag down easily. And that's what this woman was telling the judge. I understand you are the judge. Yes, you have a little prestige and even have a little power. But I'm going to show you the power that I have. I have the power first of God, but secondly, the power of persistence. Because I refuse. And that's what she was saying. But let's keep going. Getting excited. The Lord said, listen. Are you listening? Are you listening? The Lord says, listen. 
There is meaning in what the bad judge said. God's people shout to him night and day, and he will always give them what is right. He will not be slow to answer them. I tell you, God will help his people quickly. But when the Son of Man comes again, will he find people on earth who believe in him? So what, what it's saying here, God will never, he won't. He won't design a delay unless there are some things we need to do. We might be asking God for that million dollars. I'm just giving an example. And God said, now I'm watching. She just squandering her money here. She get a little extra here. And she just go out and she just spin, spinning it, spinning it. Why would I give her that million dollars? And sometimes he'll give it to you. If you are very persistent, he'll give it to you, that permissive will. And let you see that you weren't quite ready for it. Sometimes you're crying out for a mate and a spouse and God trying to warn you, that's not the one I have for you. And what happens? And then on the other hand, you get that spouse and you don't do what you need to do for that spouse and you lose the very one that God has given you. Think about that. Mm. Some of you all had that, that perfect spouse. And for some reason, this wasn't good enough for you. Now you wish you had that spouse. Some of you all have a spouse and you have made that spouse your idol. I don't know why I'm here, Lord, but we're going to go right here. We're going to stay. We're going to do what he's telling us. I, I think I'm get, I'm going to get to the pivotal moment. I thought I was going to talk about David, but okay, God want to deal with some things in the marriage right now. Some of you all went ahead of God. You married him when he told you don't marry him. You married him anyway. Okay. So, you know, you God saying, okay, now you, you just got to deal. You, you, gotta, you have to deal with what you're going through. Okay, then there's some that just have made that spouse, they, 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 they ride and die. I mean, I, I, I take them over God. Talking to me first, man. So guess what? He coming after idols. Just so you know, don't put nothing before God. Don't put that child before God. Don't put that husband before God. Because I'm telling you, all that wife before God, it's not going to be good. Okay, but I think he through God, you through. Okay. All right. It's going back to this woman with the unjust judge. Okay, Lord. I'm okay to move on. All right, because I wanna I wanna be in his in his will. I'm not here, I'm not on here. I'm not getting paid to do nothing. I am you know, I'm I'm willing. I'm yielded. All right, so I really believe that God is saying in here. That if you have some things that the enemy has taken from you, and he had no right, he never had a right to take anything from us. But some of us have relinquished some things. Some of us have gotten into things where, you know, we put ourselves there. Let me say that we have given him access, legal access. So you want to make sure if you have opened up a portal, you want to close that portal. You want to make sure that. You are in line with the word of God. That you are in line with the will of God. That you are doing nothing outside of the will. Because if you are doing anything out of the will. I'm talking to me first. Then guess what? He has the right. Satan has the right to do what he's doing. So check your portals. Close the portals. Check yourself. Check your heart. Check the way you're spending. And if everything is in line and in check, you can tell that devil you are lying. You are defeated for. And you are going to relinquish what I come here for. I'm about to take back some stuff. Some stuff he had no right taking. Although my children were loaned to me, and they belong to God. And I have truly given my children to God. I thank God they are wonderful children, you know. But 
I'm not going to stop until they are in. All the way in. I tell them, you can't play lukewarm either. Mm -hmm. No. No one is exempt from this word. We all have to do it right. We all have to do it right. So now, let's go to the pivotal moment. When I sat down, I heard those words. And let's see. I wondered. I, you know, I think I kind of know what pivotal means, but let's just see. Pivotal moments are big moments and little moments of clarity. Clarity means that you're able to see clear. Remember I told you a few weeks ago that God said he's ready to give us and wanting to give us, even in the midst of a storm, clear visibility. Okay? He don't want us where we don't understand, where we don't know. That's why he said, if a man lacketh wisdom, let him ask God liberally and abrade. He abrade us not. He liberally, liberally will give it to you. Pivotal moments are big moments and little moments of clarity that provide us with new perspectives and opportunities to change our lives. Lord, I receive the pivotal moment. Oh, I didn't go before the Father. Father, I just thank you right now. I just give you glory. I give you honor and I give you praise. You are worthy, God. Worthy is the Lamb of God that was slain. Worthy is our Father in heaven that have allowed us an opportunity to see another day, to give him glory, to give him honor, and to give him praise. He is truly the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the great I Am. So, Father, we recognize and we realize that we are only vessels, but we are willing to be used by you to bring you glory. So, Lord, let me decrease as you increase. And when my ability ends, let yours kick in. Let me only speak to the people, God, what it is that you would have me to say. And Father, I am willing, yielded, and ready to obey. I bind the enemy right now of pride. I come against lust. I take authority right now over deception in the name of Jesus. And I lose humility. I lose confidence and assurance. And I lose obedience. In the name of Jesus. I bind any attack of the enemy. That will try to hinder, block, or stop. The word from going forth. In the mighty name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. That truth shall prevail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I seal this prayer in the blood of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for another opportunity to share your word with the people of God. I thank you for another opportunity to show me, Lord God, in revelation, a revelatory knowledge. Now, Father, I ask you to let this video find who it needs to find and bless who it needs to bless. In the mighty name of Jesus, I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Let the people see you and not me. Let the people hear you and not me. Let the people heed to only your spirit, God. Teach them how to try the spirit by the spirit to see if it is of God. And I'll give you praise. Family, someone didn't make it, but surely we did. And we made it this morning to give him glory, to give him honor, and to give him praise. It's not about them new shoes you want. It's not about going on T-Moo. 
Uh, although we do that, right? We we love Timu and Amazon, but we're going to give God the praise and give him the glory first. He said we seek first, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. Then all things will be added unto us. We don't have to worry. Just put God first. All right, let's go back to pivotal moment. Lord, we repent of any sins, knowing and unknowing. I'm going to try my heart, Lord. Try my thoughts, making sure they are aligned with your word, your will, and your way as I declare World War Three on the enemy. All right. Pivotal moments are big moments and little moments of clarity that provide us with new perspectives. And opportunities to change our lives. What are some examples of pivotal moments? Let's see. Positive developments like a new responsibility. A new manager or maybe a shift in industry trends. But a pivotal moment, those are things in the natural, right? Um... But a pivotal moment in the spirit can be a divine revelation, can be a prayer answer, you know, something that you have been believing God for, something that you've been wanting, and God just came in and he did that thing, you know. That's a pivotal moment. It's when you're crying out or believing for a child and they come home and they say, you know, I'm saved and I'm fear. That's a pivotal moment. Um, when you're reading the word and you don't quite understand it, God gives you a scripture as you're going through that thing. And, you know, that's a pivotal moment. And we could go on and on and on. But the biggest pivotal moment that has taken place ah, is when Jesus carried that cross, right? When he carried that cross for us. And he went and he gave his life. But when he said, Lord, forgive them. For they know not what they do. That was a pivotal moment. When they did all that they could do to him on that cross. And he hung his head. And he gave up the ghost. That was a pivotal moment. Yeah. And then fam, we can't forget what he said. It is finished. That was a pivotal moment. Well, God want to give you a pivotal moment. God want to give you a pivotal moment. See, when the storm is over and you warfare and you ward in the spirit and you tore down some strongholds and commanded that devil to bring back. Because the Bible says whatever the, the locusts and the cankers, canker worm have eaten up or taken shall be restored to us. That's going to be a what? Pivotal moment. All right, let's see. Other words that we could use for pivotal moment, a critical moment, a crucial period, a crunch time. Oh, wow. We use that at school. Crunch time. Pivotal moment. Decisive moment. Flashpoint. Critical stage. Climax. You know, something that's going to be great. These are meaningful events in our life or careers, such as being passed up for a promotion. Now you get the promotion, starting a new job, finding a new mentor or coach, or uh, 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 just even the loss of something can be a pivotal moment. But we're going to focus on the positive today. Okay? Positive today. Can you think of the three most things, or great things that happened in your life that brought you the most happiness, those are pivotal moments, okay? The happiest moment in life can be a birth of a child, your first child, 
a wedding day, uh, the first grandchild, you know. Those are pivotal moments. So, family, I just want to see what God has to say today about pivotal moments. Know that it's some things that you are believing God for. And as we declare World War III, we shall see pivotal moments. You know, I told you about the lady, the unjust judge, would not relinquish and give her what she was asking for. But because of her persistence, she had a pivotal moment. He said, now if I don't give her what she's asking for, she gonna keep coming, and I'm sick. I'm really tired, sick and tired of her. So just give her what she's asking me to give her. I'll do for what up she did. You shall have that pivotal moment. Now, although you may look like you're having challenges right now, let's see. When you go to war against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them because the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt will be with you. The enemy you see today, you will see no more. Okay? So when you are about to go into battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army. He shall say, Here, Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not panic or be terrified by them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. So if you truly relinquish and allow God to fight your battles for you, you will see that pivotal moment. Oh yeah. We're not likely to ever face an army of horses and chariots, but some days the challenges in our lives can seem just as threatening as any battlefield. When that happens, we need to follow the advice given here in Deuteronomy. First, remember all that God has done for us in the past. Second, believe that he is the one who will fight our battles and not us. That's where that pivotal moment is going to come in at. You see, what, 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 what did David say in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter? What did he say in that verse 8? Lord, shall I pursue? He sought the Lord. Seek him today while he yet may be found. I hear that clear as day. Seek him while he yet may be found. Because when God turned a deaf ear, Let's keep going, family. God has done for us in the past. We have to recognize and realize what he's already done. Second, believe that he is the one who will fight our battles, not us. We can rely on him for the victory. Yes. He won't lie to us. He already said we, we're going to win, right? And then it, it, Revelation tells us we already won. So. Be my strong tower. That's what we're going to ask God today so we can re receive our pivotal moment. Re be my strong tower, Lord, in the midst of all my life's challenges so that I can run to you. Keep me safe. Psalms 18 and 10. You are my refuge and strength. God, my ever-present help. In the midst of challenges. Therefore I won't be scared. Even if the earth gives way beneath my feet. Even if the mountain fall into the ocean. Psalms 46, 1, 2, and 3. In the midst of all these challenges. I know. Yeah. Do you know fam? He's with us. 
He said he would never leave or forsaken us. I have set you always before me, Lord. I'm looking only at you. Are you looking at the Lord? Are you looking at that spouse that can help you? Are you looking at that that uh, rich aunt? Are you looking at that job? Are you looking at that person to make you happy? Are you looking at the Lord? Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. You're there right beside me. No challenge can shake me. What are you letting shake you today? That was Psalm 16 and 8. The joy of the Lord is our strength, right? Take note of those scriptures. Now God want to end that pivotal moment. He want to give you, he want to put blessings and favor on your life. So I'm going to give you some scriptures for that. Lord, bless me and keep me. Make your face to shine upon me and be gracious unto me. Lord, lift up your countenance upon me and give me peace. That's number 6, 24 through 26. Make me as Ephraim and Manasseh. Genesis 48, 20. Those are two brothers. You need to study them. Their lives are profound. Let me be satisfied with favor and filled with your blessing. Deuteronomy 33 and 23. That should be a scripture that you quote every, every morning. Let me be satisfied, Lord, with favor and filled with your blessing. Deuteronomy 33 and 23. Lord, command your blessing upon my life. Give me revelation. You reading the word? You don't understand the word? Ask him. Give me revelation and let me be blessed. Matthew 16 and 17. Quote that before you read this word and watch him open up the word unto you. And then you shall have a what? Pivotal moment. Pivotal moment. That's what God trying to get us to. A pivotal moment. Pivotal moments are big moments and little moments of clarity. That provide us with new perspective and opportunities to change our lives. Get ready, fam. Get ready for that pivotal moment and get ready for your life to be changed. Because you see, God don't do anything for now. If he had us to talk about pivotal moments, he's about to give you one. But first he wants to show you how to get to so you can go through so you can have that pivotal moment. I love you, family. As always, God is on that throne. He will never forsake you. And he won't leave you alone. I urge you to let God be God and seek him while yet he may be found. Because your pivotal moment is about to come around. I love you. Have an amazing day on today. And know that God loves you and so do I. And the best is what? Yet to come.